Um, just detailing the rest of the room, you have uh, in, the, in, the, in the top right-hand corner is a representative from the buildings department. Um, as I explained before, a lot of the emergencies that we respond to, um, it does require getting uh, building-specific information. So we have a representative from DOB that's here able to pull up building schematics and, and deliver it to our watch command supervisor immediately. Um, and then in the other two stations, those are our watch commanders who are on today, and they're monitoring either a specific borough or a specific emergency or both. Um, they're listening to scanners. We're plugged into um, NYPD, FDNY, FDNY EMS. Um, so if they're, if they're hearing something where they think we need to know a little bit more as to what's going on, we'll send out, as I described, one of our CICs, our citywide interagency coordinators, um, who will respond out to the scene and will relay information back to, uh, to the watch commander or to the watch command supervisor. In the old days, uh, this has been a couple of weeks getting this together because you never know when there's going to be an emergency. I'm, I, I, I pictured us sitting in a room and all of a sudden the phone rings and you got to go. Uh oh, an emergency. I mean, that can, emergencies uh, and that, are it, like that. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah. one minute it can be really quiet and the next minute you have a uh, commercial airliner landing in the Hudson River. Hudson so, River. Yeah. Or a helicopter crashing in the East River. Right, right. I've seen enough of those. As a matter of fact, I go back in New York with the Pan Am building, the helicopter that crashed up there, and that was the end of landing on the Pan Am building sure. uh, here in the city. Now, I'm, oh, there's a commercial on gone right now, uh, but this is a big news day and, and worldwide because Gaddafi uh, supposedly has been it killed. That's what I've I've seen in the news. Yes, and it's been on the news. So this could prompt some sort of reaction in New York. It might. Again, it, it, it's it could be. It's not something that the Office of Emergency Management would right. be involved in unless there was a specific request from another city agency for us to provide some support. Um, but yeah, potentially there there could be. How often do you get? To, uh, let's go back to Hurricane Irene a little bit and uh, the earthquake. How, what was your, what, what happened on that occasion? What was your, was there a, what, did they need a response from you? Did they need your help? And, and, and how did it? Me specifically? Not, well, you specifically, but the office as well. Okay. Um, was there a need for uh, Office of Emergency? Absolutely. That? Absolutely. So what, what, what we, we, we helped to coordinate the entire, the entire operation. As you know, we evacuated Zone A. Um, you know, which was the low-lying areas. So we opened up um, shelters. We sheltered people um, in New York City. It's the first time that uh, New York City has done this before, so it was a huge undertaking, and we helped to coordinate the entire operation. I mean, that's through the help of, you know, uh, FDNY and NYPD. All right. And, of course, the buses were set up to bring people out of the low-lying areas. Uh, so you, so that was your, your yes. role. That was OEM at that we point. Have, we, have a, 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 we have detailed plans that the city has written. Um, we don't share those, you know, with the public, but we have detailed plans that we've written on how to evacuate low-lying areas in lower Manhattan and how to evacuate nursing homes, dialysis centers, um, you know, hospitals um, that are in those affected areas, especially out in the Rockaways. Is there anything you can share with us at this point, on the, and without going to some of the evacuation, without, without? Well, we have to look at the event, um, you know, multiple hours out because what happens is, is it's our our commissioner Joseph Bruno who makes the recommendation to Mayor Bloomberg by saying, "I strongly feel that we need to be evacuating these nursing homes or these hospitals or these shelter or these dialysis centers." Um, so it, it's. It's something that we look at very closely, and we have to be able to pull that trigger in enough time to be able to get all of those people out before, as we call it, ground zero, before the storm actually hits in that specific area. So uh, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of planning that goes into this, and we made the recommendation to evacuate, and uh, the city did. We evacuated. And we tell people, listen to the experts, trust what we're saying, monitor the news, and if we tell you to evacuate, evacuate. Because if you wait too long, then you might not be able to get out. So the evacuation call came from inside. Not It didn't come to you. It came from your building. In other words, the evacuation was your, your recommendation. That's what than. our office, our planning and preparedness unit, that's what they... Uh, that's what they were working on. That's what they work on every day is these court, these detailed plans. And it was, it was the recommendation of this office to the mayor to uh, to evacuate those low lying areas. When you look at it now, was that was that the proper reaction? Was there what what happened in low lying areas? What is was was it was it 
it becomes something because I, I, I living down in South Carolina for the last few years, when I hear Category 1, you know, you're going about your business and that's it. But Category 1 could be something completely different. Well, at the time, it was, it, it, was, it was a Category 2 hurricane that was going to hit New York City. So, um, and that's something that we take very seriously. Right. Um, so looking back on it now, yes, it was the right decision to evacuate. Sure. It's always Absolutely. Been, safe is always better than sorry. Sure. Okay, so um, now uh, I'm going to – I found some of these brochures we read in New York flooding for pets. And let's talk about – let's talk about – some of my favorite people, pets. Let's talk sure. about Ready New York for pets. I see some parrots here. I'm yeah, absolutely. We have a whole Ready New York program, and, it's, right. and yeah. it's everything from uh, Ready New York business, Ready New York seniors, Ready New York pets. We have a household guide. Um, it's, a, it's the idea of, as I indicated before, of, of teaching people to be prepared before an emergency happens. And as part of it, um, it's for pets. I mean, people, I, you know, I have a dog. I consider, you know, my dog a part of my family. Um, so these are, these are simple, easy steps that you can use to plan and prepare. If you have to leave your home, you have to leave your apartment, things that you should have for your pet if you need to relocate. Okay, evacuating your pet. I see a parrot up there and a gecko. Geico, gecko? Gecko, geico, <laughs> yep. Okay, give us a couple of pointers on evacuating your parrot. Like, come on, would be. I mean, that's your that. Right? Well, you know, we encourage people to make sure that you have a uh, a carrying case for your pet, uh, so that way, if you do have to leave, you have a, a you know a way of being able to transport uh, the animal. Making sure that you have enough food uh, for the animal, so that if you do have to stay in a shelter for a few days, there is food. But I will tell you. Um, we did, uh, I don't have the exact number, but I know we did, um, we did house uh, pets at a lot of the evacuation shelters, um, really? and we were able to provide food and water for the pets, yes. How, how did that work? I'd get cages set up? And yeah, they had cages. Most people came with cages, but we had bigger cages for bigger, you know, dogs. Um, they were kept in a separate area, um, but we, you know, we, we plan for this. We plan, you know, down to the very little, which is your pet. I mean, people consider pets part of their family. Yeah. Okay, so a person walks in with a, with a parrot. Well, then let's go to that parrot because it's an unusual pet. It's sure. Not unusual. Okay, so a person walks in, the parrot needs. What, what, what happens with this parrot? Now? I would have to. I, I, I would have to check and see, sort of, uh, through our human services department, what sort of supplies they would have right. for a parrot. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. So it's an unusual. Sure. Kind of sure. unusual. What about pandemic uh, flu? Ready sure. In New York. Let's talk about pandemic flu. Absolutely. Um, this is a whole guide on you know what you can do now. You know we're approaching flu season. Um, it describes. Um, sort of how vulnerable people can be, um, steps that people should take. Uh, we encourage people, stay home if you're sick. Don't send your children to school if they're sick. Um, you know, keep your distance from other people that are sick. Washing your hands is very important. Um, that's a very easy way for germs to be spread. Um, and it's, it's talking about also um, where you can go to receive a flu shot. Um, it's uh, it, it's important, you know. We are we're right at, at flu season right now, um, and it's it, we 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 discuss sort of the the signs of, uh, of of flu, what you should look out for: fever, headache, chills, extreme fatigue, dry cough, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, body aches. Um, all signs that people should look out for if they feel that they're coming down with uh, with the flu. All right. Again, give a website where people can actually people can sign up. And uh, actually, it doesn't only work for New York. It works for anyway. This basically is a, it, it applies to all cities. Well, the best in a way. The, to to get information, we all of these guides that we have, um, you can download from your computer. If you go to www.nyc.gov/oem, all of the the guides that we have, uh, you can download. Um, so everything that we're taking a look at right now, you can view right online. Okay, and again, the address the. the Website? It's www.nyc.gov slash OEM. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we're going to, we won't be much longer, but I do want to kind of take a, a sweep around the room for a sure. moment. But I do want to say something that, and again, I guess you you don't, this would not be your area of, 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 of emergency. 
But uh, while in town, and folks that have been listening to New York City Visions uh, for a while uh, know that when I come into Brooklyn, I stay with a couple of friends, uh, Pam and Steve, and I, on one occasion I, I took care of their cats while they were away. Well, uh, uh, two Mondays ago, October the, I think it was October the 1st, uh, October the 3rd, um, my, my host, my dear friend, I know for so long, she passed away. She had a heart attack, and I called 911, 911, and I, I, I'll tell you, it couldn't have been more than four minutes before the, the fire department got there and the, and the police department got there, and they did all they could. They got there quick, but too late, she, she, she passed away. So I, wanna th- I, don't, I don't know that emergency management, but it's emergency, and I do want to take this time anyway to thank New York for... Well, thank some you. Great, we appreciate some it. Great, some great emergency uh, service on that 911. And they actually made out the address, and I was so frantic, and, and they actually got there, and everything was fine. So I just want to well, that's what sort of a goodbye they're, they're, to you know, my friend in the, Pamela. That's what they're in the business of doing. And, you know, we like to think here in New York City that we're blessed to have the world's greatest police department, the world's greatest fire department. It was so amazing because it was a rush hour kind of thing there, and there they were. I, was, I said, is that them already? It was just, it was just so incredible. And... I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss Pamela. Okay, so we're at so the. So let's go through the room here. Yeah, yeah let, me, absolutely. let me keep you on. Logis- this is logistics. So in other words, everybody here, logistics staff, it all looks like. This is all OEM staff that sits here. Yep. So this is all OEM. Right? Sure. Well, and then it br- it branches over here to National, National Weather, Weather Service sits Service? here. And the one nice thing about these is that it's interchangeable. So if we need to take out the, you know, the Office of Management and Budget, this slides right out, and we can put in another card that's listing, you know, another city agency. So, and, and this is set up so that the uh, the main the main dais over there is where your folks sit, and you can kind of coordinate as well, you go. Well, the, the podium right up here oh, okay. um, is where all of the OEM staff sits. So if it's the red team that's up, red team members are going to sit up here. If it's blue team or white team, they're going to sit up here. And all of the information gets funneled up through the podium. Um, what is the red team, white team, and blue team? It's, it is everybody at OEM sits on a different team. So, um, you're like right now, I believe it is the blue team that's up. So if there's some sort of emergency, I know when, um, when the helicopter recently crashed into the East river right away, we activated our situation room. So we had a limited activation, um, with representatives from the red team. Um, and it's everything from, uh, transportation infrastructure, infrastructure, uh, logistics, human services. Um, if there's anything that, that's going to be needed at the scene or moving forward, it's our job, our role to be able to coordinate that. Right. So the color is this, the sense of just red, white, and blue. Oh, so that's it's it. just, it's just simply, okay, you're in white, but the red isn't any more of a drastic situation nope, than the white. Not at all. No, it's just, okay. that's just the color scheme. But as you see here for each of these uh, locations, this, see how there, you have the top one here. This is broken down into what we call ESF, emergency service function. So if you yeah. come over here, you'll see that this is the transportation ESF here, and then this is the public safety ESF here, and the health and medical. So when we talk about public safety, it's going to be Port Authority Police, it's going to be Department of Homeland Security, it's going to be NYPD, and then for health and medical, it's going to be FDNY, FDNY EMS, um, Regional Emergency Management Office. Um, it's, so it's a one-stop shop for this information. All the information that's gathered here gets funneled up into here. And this is where the decision makers sit for OEM up here. Okay, paint the picture of the room. Uh, we're, we're just about at the center of the room. Uh, what's the shape of this, uh, like an oblong kind of thing? Yeah, or? it's we, we call it's the podium, but we sort of oh. refer to it as the boat because it looks like a boat. Is it oblong? It looks <laughs> like it, yeah. <laughs> so, this is, so this is where the EOC manager sits. So uh, this is where all the information gets funneled into, into this individual here. So everybody working here funnels into here. This is kind of like the right. where, it, where it, all the information exactly, winds up. Exactly. And then it's coordinated from it. And uh, what is the, give, give us some, the size of the room logistics and all that. This room can fit approximately 150 to 160 people. Right. It's big. You can, as I said before, you could run the entire city out of this room if you had to. What is the what is the most what is the most what is the busiest biggest emergency you've you've been a part of here at OEM? What, what, in the, the field ultimate? or or I, in the office? In the field, I know. 